Noah. It's a lovely day, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, Granny, I have a question. Oh, what is it, dear? What's the difference between being smart and being wise? Joanna says it doesn't do any good to be smart if you're not wise, and she said to ask you because she couldn't explain it. Well, that's quite a question. Hmm, the simple answer would be that to be smart is to have understanding and large amounts of knowledge. Wisdom is to weigh and use knowledge properly uh, in, uh, according to sensible judgments. I see, I think. Um, Granny, are you sure that's the simple answer? <laughs> Maybe a look at the wisest man who ever lived would help us. Oh, you mean Solomon. I've been reading about him in First Kings. Good. So you know that he was David's choice from all of his sons to become the third king of Israel. Yeah, and after a few problems with his brothers, Solomon became king. David prayed for him and gave him great advice before he died. That's as far as I've gotten. Well, God came to Solomon in a dream, granting him one request. Solomon asked for wisdom to rule his people. God was so pleased that Solomon had not asked for riches or power or fame, so he promised to give Solomon wisdom and to, to uh, some of those other things too. Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived, and he was also rich and famous almost beyond measure. God promised then and again later that if Solomon stayed true and obeyed his laws, he, would, he and his descendants would be blessed and would always sit on Israel's throne. Oh, well, how do we know that Solomon was wise? I mean, what did he do to show his wisdom? Well, first he educated himself about plants and animals, and he studied human nature so he could best know how to govern them. Once, two women came before him. The two of them lived in the same house, and just three days apart, each had given birth to a baby boy. One of them told Solomon that the other had accidentally rolled over in, the, in her sleep and had smothered her child, and then she had switched the babies, keeping the live child for herself and leaving the dead one for her. The other woman insisted that she was the mother of the live child, and the first woman had smothered her child. Oh, that is a tough case since they didn't have all those blood tests they have nowadays. Uh, what did Solomon do? He called for a sword and told the guard to cut the child in half and give half to each woman. Oh, but, but, but that would kill the baby. Oh, yes, of course. It would have. But it didn't happen? No. One of the women cried out, No, no, don't kill him. Let her have him. And the other woman said, Go ahead, then both of us will have dead sons. Oh, so Solomon knew that the true mother would save her son's life, even if she didn't get to raise him, and the false mother wouldn't care. That is wisdom. Right. The true mother got her child back, and the problem was solved. All of Israel revered Solomon for his wisdom, and humans from all the known world came to hear Solomon speak. Even the Queen of Sheba came and was overwhelmed by his wisdom and all of his wealth. It was also Solomon who God chose to build the temple for him. Solomon made treaties and agreements with many other countries so that his reign was one of peace, and he wrote some of the Psalms, most of Proverbs, which is a whole book of wise sayings, he also wrote Ecclesiastes and the Song of Solomon. Wow! But Granny, why did David become considered to be the greatest king of Israel when Solomon was wiser, richer, and more famous? Well, because David was the greater king. Um, I don't understand. Wisdom didn't make Solomon perfect, and riches and fame are not what makes a good king. You see, Noah, when Solomon made those treaties and agreements with other countries, he sealed the deals by marrying one of the other king's daughters each time. 
He eventually had 700 wives of noble birth and 300 concubines. Those are ladies who aren't married to the king but are treated as wives. Well, that's like having a thousand wives. Whoa! Many of them were from countries from which God had forbidden Israel to take wives because they were idol worshippers and would turn the men away from him. That's what happened to Solomon. He even built pagan altars for his wives and worshipped their gods with them. He what? And all of this caused even more trouble to feed those women and children and for Solomon to maintain his lavish lifestyle taxes in Israel were very, very high. And even with all of that, when we read Ecclesiastes, we find that Solomon was not a happy man. Um, Granny, how could this happen to the wisest man on earth? That is a very good question, Noah. Maybe he loved having all those women and his riches more than he loved God. Some humans think it's wise to worship all gods, sort of to cover all your bases, or that all gods are the same. But Solomon knew that the God of Israel was and is the only true and living God. Maybe he thought God wouldn't really punish him for all of his disobeying. Oh, this is very sad. God became angry with Solomon, and he appeared to him a third and last time. He told Solomon that since he had been stubborn and refused to obey him, and had turned away and followed other gods, his kingdom would be torn from him and given to someone else. Because of God's love for David, this would not happen until after Solomon's death, and because of David, God would leave one tribe of in the hands of David's descendants. Solomon should not have turned away from God. Did he ever repent and come back? Well, we're not sure, but at the end of Ecclesiastes, he wrote, after uh, studying and trying almost everything on earth and finding that everything of this earth is folly, uh, that's another word for useless, deceptive, or foolish, uh, he wrote, Now all has been heard, and there is one conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring to every deed in judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it be good or evil. Well, now that is real wisdom. Yes, it is. Living for Jesus, a life that is true. Striving to please him in all that I do. Yielding allegiance, glad-hearted and free. This is the pathway for blessings for me. O oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee. For Thou in Thy atonement didst give Thyself for me. I own no other master. My heart shall be Thy throne. My life I give.